Kamal Shrivangi Desai, your instructor for the video series of data mining and business intelligence. Today's topic is reporting and analysis of data. Now let's get started. So the agenda of this lecture is to understand the need of reporting and analyzing data and life cycle of data. So let's understand why we require reporting and analysis of data. We are living in the information age is a popular saying. However, we are actually living in the data age. Terabytes or petabytes of data pour into our computer networks and various data storage devices every day from businesses, society, science and engineering, medicine and almost every other aspect of daily life. This explosive growth of available data volume is a result of the computerization of our society and the fast development of powerful data collection and storage tools. Businesses worldwide generate gigantic data sets including sales transactions, stock trading records, product descriptions, sales promotions and customer feedback. For example, large stores such as Walmart handles hundreds of millions of transactions per week at thousands of branches around the world. Scientific and engineering practices generate high orders of petabytes of data in a continuous manner from remote sensing, process measuring, scientific experiments, system performance and engineering observations. Global backbone telecommunication networks carry tens of petabytes of data traffic every day. The medical and health industry generates tremendous amount of data from medical records and patient monitoring. Billions of web searches supported by search engines process tens of petabytes of data daily. Communities and social media have become increasingly important data sources producing digital pictures and videos, blogs, web communities and various kinds of social networks. The list of sources that generate huge amount of data is endless. This explosively growing, widely available and gigantic body of data makes our time truly the data age. However, these are the raw data which does not provide useful information. In today's highly competitive business environment, companies need to turn these terabytes of raw data into some useful information. Data reporting and analysis are the strategy to uncover valuable information from the large amount of data and to transform such data into organized knowledge. So let's understand what is reporting and analyzing data. Reporting is the process of organizing data into informational summaries in order to monitor how different areas of business are performing. While analysis is the process of exploring data and reports in order to extract meaningful insights which can be used to better understand and improve business performance. So we can say that reporting translates raw data into information while analysis transforms data and information into insights. Reporting helps companies to monitor their online business and be alerted to when data falls outside of expected ranges. Good reporting should raise questions about the business from its end users. The goal of analysis is to answer questions by interpreting the data at a deeper level and providing actionable recommendations. In summary, reporting shows us what is happening while analysis focuses on explaining why it is happening and what you can do about it. Now let's discuss the general methods of analysis and reporting can be broadly classified into two categories. First, parametric analysis. Data that are used for parametric statistical analysis can produce very little information about the behavior of the product based on the process utilized to gather the data. This is the hardcore reliability data with all the associated charts, graphs and projections that can be used to predict the behavior of the products in the field. The origin of this type of data is usually in-house from reliability testing done in laboratories set up for the specific purpose. 
for that reason more detail will be associated with this data set than with those that are collected from the field now second method is non parametric analysis data used for non parametric analysis includes information that has not or cannot be rigorously processed or analyzed usually it is simply straight reporting of information or if the data has been manipulated it is usually by simple mathematics with no complex statistical analysis this type of information will be of most interest to managers as it usually requires no special technical know how to interpret another reason it is of particular interest to managers is that most financial data falls into this category most of the important decisions that are made concerning the businesses are based on non parametric analysis of financial data now let's discuss the life cycle of data the data life cycle is the sequence of stages that a particular unit of data goes through from its initial generation to its eventual deletion the data life cycle diagram is an essential part of managing business data through its life cycle while there are many interpretation as to the various phases of a typical data life cycle they can be summarized as follows first stage is data creation the cycle starts with the generation of data people generates data for example every search query we perform every link we click movie we watch book we read pictures we take message we send and place we go contribute to the massive digital footprint we each generate in an organization data is typically created by one of the three ways first data entry which includes manual entry of new data by personnel within the organization second data acquisition which includes acquiring already existing data which has been produced outside the organization and third is data capture which includes capture of data generated by devices used in various processes in the organization second stage of data life cycle is storage once data has been created within the organization it needs to be stored and protected with the appropriate level of security applied controls such as encryption and access policy should be implemented to avoid data threats a robust backup and recovery process should also be implemented to ensure retention of data during the life cycle third stage is usage during the usage phase of the data life cycle data is used to support activities in the organization data can be viewed processed modified and saved an audit trail should be maintained for all critical data to ensure that all modif modification to data are fully traceable data may also be made available to share with other outside the organization however not all data should be shared and not all sharing should be present a threat since shared data is no longer in control of the organization this is a very challenging task to perform securely fourth stage is archival in this phase data leaves active use and enters long term storage data is removed from all active production environments it is no longer processed used or published but is stored in case it is needed again in the future a data archive is simply a place where data is stored but where no maintenance or general usage occurs if necessary the data can be restored to an environment where it can be used last stage of data life cycle is purging the volume of archived data automatically grows and it is not feasible to save all the data forever storage cost and compliance issues apply pressure to destroy data that no longer needed data destruction or purging is the removal of every copy of a data item from an organization it is typically done from an archive storage location the challenges of this phase of the life cycle is to ensure that the data has been properly destroyed 
it is important to ensure before destroying data that the data items have exceeded their required regularity retention period. Data lifecycle management is becoming increasingly important since the explosion of big data and the ongoing development of the Internet of Things. Enormous volumes of data are being generated by an ever increasing number of devices all over the world. Proper oversight of data throughout the life cycle is essential to optimize its useful and minimize the potential for errors. Finally, archiving or deleting data at the end of its useful life ensure that it does not consume more resources than necessary. That's it for this video. Thank you.